everyone, welcome or welcome back. For those of you who do not know who I am, my name is Caroline, hello, and I am an artist, an art teacher, and muralist right here in the Portland, Oregon area. I upload a new video every single Monday morning on all things artsy fartsy, so if that interests you, then don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below. In today's video, I thought I would do something a little different, something I've never done before. So I thought we'd play around with some glow-in-the-dark paint and see if we can, can't make something really pretty from that. So with that all said, let's get painting. <laughs> Okay, we're starting off with our 8x10 panel and I've got some of my favorite golden and Utrecht paints here and then I found these really cool little glow-in-the-dark paints on Amazon here and they're itty bitty they're only 20 milliliters you can see that right there so there's not very much in here but I don't think we'll use much at all anyways so it's totally fine for this project and I'll be sure to link everything down below in the description box in case you guys want to make one of these paintings yourselves. Okay, so I'm coming in with black and a little ultramarine blue up in the corners. And then I'm going to gradually fade that a little lighter, a little brighter as we get towards that horizon line. So I thought it'd be a really cool idea to try out these glow-in-the-dark paints on a seascape. So we'll be painting... Um, a night sky with an ocean and a crashing wave hitting the beach and then we'll use those glow-in-the-dark paints for certain areas of the painting. So I'm coming in with my palette knife. I thought it'd be a good idea to just put a little tiny mountain range or hills off on the left hand side here. That way the painting's a little more interesting and it's not just an ocean. And if you guys haven't done this before, I'll link some of my other videos down below. You can check out how to do these mountains with a palette knight more, more in depth with those videos. So I'm coming in with a dark sea foam color and then a lighter version of that, sort of a minty sea foam color right there for the highlights. You can obviously paint your mountains whatever color you'd like. I was also thinking very shades of pink or purple would be pretty in this painting, but I just decided to kind of stick with more of a overall green and blue feel to the painting. So I'm coming in with that darker sea foam green color. I'm going to drop that in for the water off in the distance and I'll be going through with a little ultramarine blue as well to darken up some areas. Now I'm going to sketch out my wave right here and right in the middle-ish is fine and just fill in the rest of that watercolor. Now I'm coming in with a little bit of yellow and orange and starting to color in some of the sand. And we're also going to be putting a moon somewhere in the middle. About here is fine. That looks good to me. And your moon doesn't have to be perfect. Just a nice little, little blob in the center there should be just fine. So my plan for this painting for those glow-in-the-dark paints is to color in the moon, the highlighted areas of the mountain, maybe some stars, the peak of the crashing wave here, um, some spots in the ocean, and then a little bit of the sand will also have some highlights. So this glow-in-the-dark paint here, the white, is really milky. It's very translucent. So I'm not sure if this is going to work, but I'm going to try to sprinkle in some stars here. And I didn't add any water to this at all, by the way, and it's just dripping down um, without any additives, which is great, but I suspect it won't be very glowy. I'm going to go ahead and just start coloring in the moon here with a little bit of that paint. The bottle does say that you need to add at least two coats to your areas, so we'll see how it turns out. 
I'm just going to go in now with my fan brush and start adding in the details of my water. I do plan on going over these areas a little bit with some of that uh, glow in the dark paint. While you guys watch me add in these lovely little details here, I guess it's a good time to now mention that I do have a website and on that website I have a little shop where you can buy all of my little demonstrations that I do here right on YouTube. Now I'm going in with a little bit of dark blue to add some depth into that ocean, give it a little bit more life. And I think I'll actually darken up the right and left sides of the ocean just a little bit more and then brighten up the middle because the middle is where that moon is going to be um, reflecting off of the water and hitting that wave. And so we'll have a nice bright area down the middle of our painting. And so the left and right sides should be a little bit darker. If you guys enjoy my videos, I would love it if you could please give me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button and click on that little bell icon so that you turn on all notifications. That way you don't miss any of my weekly uploads. In case you don't remember that I do upload every Monday morning at 8 a.m. Getting the notifications turned on will help you to be alerted to when I release a new video. So now I'm just going in with some white and I'm going to fluff up the edge of the wave. Okay, so I've just been going through and adding a little bit more detail into the wave here, smoothing out those colors, adding a little bit of yellow, really help brighten that area of the wave in the middle. And I'm gonna go through and work on the sand now. I'm gonna lighten it, and then I'm gonna put some darker colors in there as well to give it some depth. So I've never painted with glow-in-the-dark paint before that I can recall. So for the one time when I was a kid, I painted my walls of my bedroom with stars using glow-in-the-dark paint. And that was super cool when you turn off the lights. It felt like you were floating. But besides that, I don't think I've ever done it with a piece of artwork before. So I'm really looking forward to this. And I've seen other artists do it in various different ways. And it 
it always looks really, really pretty. So I hope that mine turns out okay. Um, this is my first attempt using it. So we will just have to keep our fingers crossed. Now I'm going through with a little bit of blue for the bottom part of that um, white crashing wave area. You always want to give it at least a couple colors so that it does uh, have a little bit more depth. So it's, it's a, it has a little bit of shadow in there so it doesn't look so flat. So I did try to make this video as a real time video without speeding it up. And I got it down to about 45 minutes and I still thought that was kind of long for a video. So I decided to go ahead and speed this one up like I normally do. Let me know if you guys are interested in actually watching a real time painting so you can do a paint along with me. Um, I'd be curious to see if anybody's interested in that. Uh, I kind of assume that nobody is, which is why I keep my videos kind of short. So I'd like to know your feedback on that. So again, I'm just going through with a little bit of darker color here and there in the sand to give it the appearance that there's some little bumps and ripples, maybe some standing water in the sand and just make it look not so flat and boring. So I also wanted to announce that the sun appears to be coming out more often up here in cloudy, gray, depressing Oregon. So that means hopefully I'll be able to get back up to Mount Hood and work on that mural some more. It's just been sitting up there and I hate that I have this huge, beautiful, unfinished project up there. So hopefully I'll get that done um, within this month and then that video will be released shortly after. Okay, so I'm taking my liner brush now and I'm just using some titanium white with a little bit of blue in it. And I'm just very gently going over the ocean and trying to give it some life by adding a few ripples and waves and other things off in the distance here. Okay, and while you guys watch me put some more details in here, why don't I play you a little bit more music? Okay, so the painting's really starting to come along now. I am pretty happy with this, and it also means that we'll be able to start using those glow-in-the-dark paints here pretty soon. So the reason why I'm doing the glow-in-the-dark paints on top 
very last is because I was worried that they wouldn't show through the other paints since they're very opaque. They cover up things very well. So I wanted to make sure that the paints, the glow in the dark paints go on last so that they could be the brightest that they can be. So now I am going in with just a little bit of that glow in the dark yellow on top of the moon here. And I'm going to start layering it in. So remember I mentioned earlier, the bottle says that you need at least two coats. So I am going back over this. This is my second coat now on the moon. Probably going to add a third. And I'm going to do my best and hopefully it'll glow. So while we let that moon dry for a second time, I'm going to start adding in a few clouds here. I feel like the sky is kind of boring, so why not pop in a few fluffy, happy little clouds in the distance? In case you're wondering where I learned how to paint like this, specifically the ocean uh, crashing waves, things of that nature, um, two artists. One, obviously, Bob Ross, who is just an amazing spirit. And it's greatly missed. And the other one is uh, my mother, who is also um, greatly missed. And she was a wonderful artist. She taught me how to do the waves and how to make it look like water. And she did a lot of ocean paintings herself. So that's how I learned how to do this type of a painting. So now I'm going to add in some pure white to those clouds to brighten them up a bit. And I'll actually add some of the white glow in the dark paint to the clouds up here too. And hopefully they'll glow a little from the moonlight. Okay, so it's the time you guys have been waiting for the glow in the dark paints here. I've got yellow, blue, white, and green. Here's the blue. It is really thick and kind of grainy. It's so strange. The other paints aren't like this. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's like frosting, like really bad fake frosting. So I don't know if this is normal. It says to stir it, which I've been stirring it. Here's the white. It's much, much smoother. Can you see the difference there? It's sort of like Elmer's glue. And then the yellow is super liquidy. See, it just drips off. So I don't know if this is normal or not, but let's give it a go. Okay, so I'm going over the moon with that yellow and I am really surprised by how, how bright it is. It is absolutely neon. So it looks like it will change the overall appearance of the painting during the day, which it is what it is, it's fine. I'm, I'm really just excited to see how it looks in the dark. So I'm going to go ahead and add that yellow here in the peak of the wave and then also I'm um, going to put some in the sand as well, mostly because I don't really know what other color to use down there in the sand. So here we go. Hopefully this doesn't look ridiculous when I'm done. So I'm going to go ahead and mix the green with the blue to try to get a nice blue-green color for some of the water. So this color actually looks pretty nice on here. Hopefully it glows though. That's my only concern. I have no idea what is going on with that blue. I've never seen that before anywhere. So if you guys know, please let me know down below in the comments what might have happened. Is that normal or not? I don't know. But uh, mixing the blue and the green together has created a really beautiful um, glowing color for the water. I absolutely love it. So I, I'm pretty happy so far. So I'm going through in the center of the water here and brightening that up with some of the glow in the dark paint. And then I'll touch up the ground some more. And then back here, I'm gonna add some green, which it looks much brighter than I had thought, but I, you know, I think it'll turn out great, honestly. I think it'll work good. So I'm just putting that bright uh, glow in the dark green on those highlighted areas of my mountain back here in the distance. And I'm going to go through with a little bit of white and blue glow in the dark paint in those clouds to see if I can get them to glow and also put a little around the moon here. Um, again, I suspect this blue is probably not going to work. Honestly, it, there's something wrong with it. It's super grainy and it's going on weird. 
kind of grainy on the on the surface as well so we'll see what happens though and now I'm going to go through with the white though and touch up the white fluffy areas of that water and I'm really getting excited here I can't wait to see how this looks Now I'm going over the clouds one more time. So that's the second coat for the clouds. And I think I have three or four coats on that moon now. And I'll go over the water one more time as well. So hopefully this all gets a good coating of that glow in the dark paint and it works. Now I'm going in with my liner brush and I'm using just the very tip to dot in some white for those stars since they didn't really splatter very well. It was way too watery so I don't think it'll glow. Um, so this is technically going to be the second coat for the stars. Hopefully they show up in the dark. Okay, so I'm gonna go over this area one more time with that yellow and touch up some other things here and there. And then we are just about ready for it to dry and sit under the lamp. Mr. Ripley is almost always around when I paint. He is literally hovering above me and watching me as I do this and also trying to get into the water cup there. So in case you guys wanted to know, there's always a cat nearby when I paint. I'm just going to use my superpowers really quick and speed this right along so we can get to the more exciting part of the painting. Okay, so here it is under normal light. And Mr. Ripley is going to be guarding it as it sits, dries, and absorbs that light so we can charge it and see how it looks in the dark. Right, Ripley? Okay, so I'm actually going to film as I pick this up and walk it over to the darkest room of my house, which is the office. That way you can see it in real time um, how it changes from a light area to a dark room. So we're just going to walk right over here and I got to open the door really quick and step inside. Are you guys ready? I'm so excited. Oh, oh my God. Oh my goodness. Look at that. <gasps> Isn't that cool? I'm going to stand behind the door so it's even darker look at that it's glowing it worked it looks like the yellow worked the green worked the white's okay and the blue didn't work too well but i am super happy all right so there you go a glow in the dark painting i had a lot of fun with this i think it turned out really good and i think i'm going to play around with it some more in the future i have some other ideas of other ways that i could play around with it so stick around for that that's it for today, everyone. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all next week.